So the following is a video going through a solution of the following review questions for Python. First question, we write a matrix below to a text file called xy.dat and we want a header in the file pound x comma y. After we've written the files, we'll read them back in and show the contents and we'll use NumPy's text file functions for this. So we're given a set of xy data and we want to write that data to a file. First, we need to make a matrix out of it. We can call it xy equals um, mp.vstack x comma y <coughs> dot transpose. Okay, so the thing about these arrays is uh, Python basically views them as if they were rows like this. So vstack will turn these two arrays and stack them vertically so that we get a matrix that looks like shown. But then we want it to really be more like x, y with like the data like this. So we'll just transpose that matrix here so that it looks vertical. So that gives us our data. Then to save the data we simply write np.savetxt, give it the name of the file xy.dat <clears throat> give it the data, x, y, and then we also want this header. Python will append the comment for us, so we can do header equals x, comma, y, and that's it. We can check it out if we go and file open x, y, dot, dat. Sure enough, we get the data. Now we can go through, <clears throat> once we've saved it to a file, we can go and read it in. So we can go xy red equals np.read text. <coughs> read the file, xy.dat, and then print it out. Print xy read. Sorry, not read text, load text. There we go, and there's the data. So pretty easy to read, pretty easy to write, and when it reads the data, it interprets this header as a comment because it starts with a pound character. Okay, so problem one, what's problem two is to redo that problem, but this time we're gonna use generic file IO and not using NumPy's text functions. This is slightly more involved, so for this, let's write the data. So we go O file equals um, open, open the file, xy.dat, and then we'll call it xy.maybe2.dat because we're doing it differently. And we'll open it for writing. Okay, and then we need to write the header, O file dot write. Write writes a string, so the header will be pound x comma y and we need to explicitly tell it to put a new line character in there or it won't do it for us and then we do now we need to loop through the x data writing it to the file so we can do for i in range np dot size x <coughs> and then we can go o file dot write Right, writing a string, so we'll do percent %g, percent %g, that's our, and then a new line, and then we'll put in the variables. So we're gonna, wherever you see the percent, a variable is gonna go in there, and then we give it percent and a list of the variables. So this will be x, i, and y, i, like so. And that's it, and it wrote it, so let's go ahead and see if it was in there. File open, xy2.dat, and it's empty, what happened? It's because I didn't close the file. So we go ofile.close, try again, do over. Ta-da, and we get the data. Okay, because we did percent %g, the formatting is a little different. Percent %g finds the best formatting for the data and doesn't do anything fancy with it. 
Remember, as I forgot to, anytime you open a file, you should have a closed statement later on. So now we've written the file, let's go ahead and um, read the file back in. So now let's go I file equals open xy2.dat for reading. And then we can grab, now we'll grab all of the files. So we can do lines equals I file dot read lines. That'll load a list of lines where every line in the list is one of the lines of the file. Now we don't need the header, so the, a convenient way to get rid of the header is to just go lines equals lines one to the end. That will not include the, the zeroth element. So now the lines include just the data. <coughs> These lines are now strings. There's a couple ways we can get those strings <coughs> into the data that we need. But we'll just do it um, the old-fashioned way, and we'll do create um, some data for us. X, Y, R for red um, equals np dot empty, and we'll give it size zero so that's really empty. <coughs> <coughs> and then we can do for i comma lines in enumerate lines. Well, I don't think we actually need the I for this. Let's just leave that off. We'll just do for line, line in lines. Let's split that line, which right now is a string of this. We'll split it into two words, which will be word one and word two. So we can do words equals line dot split. And now we can go x, y, red <coughs> um, let's see, we want this to be a two-dimensional array that we read in. <coughs> so let's go ahead and write this as well, let's just go ahead and give it size. We don't need to do anything fancy. Equals um, np dot empty, and we'll make it uh, the size of this thing can be x dot size, or sorry, len x by two. There we go. <clears throat> and then we can go, if, if we're going to do that, let's go ahead and call this for i end range len x like that. And then we'll go line equals lines i. And then we can go words equals line dot split. And then we can go x, y, r. Um, I comma zero equals words zero and X, Y, R, I comma one equals words one. So the given col the given row column zero is the first word in the line and the given row with the second column is the second word in the row. And but right now the words is a string, so we should probably do convert that to a float like that. Float words. And then let's close our file. I file dot close and let's print X, Y, R. <coughs> and sure enough, there's our uh, data recovered. So that worked okay. There's a couple of different ways to do this. You could make just an empty XYR and then append the results every time. You can in fact make a for loop that um, uses enumerate, which is useful for I comma line in ring in enumerate lines. <coughs> um, then we wouldn't need this line anymore. 
and we get the same thing. This is a handy feature because it both lets line be each of the string lines that are in here, but it also keeps track of which particular item that it, you are in the list starting at zero. So that's handy when you want to work with a particular object, but also want to reference the uh, which number you are, and that's what enumerate does for you. Okay, so that's that. Um, <clears throat> now that we have some data, let's go ahead and load it into an Excel worksheet without copying and pasting it. So we'll go <clears throat> data, get external data, import text file. And if we go to the place we are here, x, y, I guess it doesn't matter which we choose. All files, x, y, data, get the data. And then we get options for how we want to read this data in. Next, finish, OK. And we get basically our data that we can then use however we like. And maybe need to clean up the a header just a little bit, not a big deal. Okay, <clears throat> then let's plot the data that we've read in, problem five, plot it up, include access labels in a legend. So we can go scatter plot. And that's an interesting looking plot. If we add some lines to it, ah, that, that looks a little better. We already have a legend on there. Let's get rid of the title. Let's maybe make that x-axis so that it crosses at the bottom. So um, <clears throat> horizontal axis crosses at um, minus 1.5. So you don't have to do that, but that's sometimes convenient. Get rid of the guidelines. Maybe add a line around here, double click it. So playing with the graphs is an exercise in right-clicking and double-clicking. And then you can put the legend on the graph, expand this over. Graphs in Excel look better if you have a line around them, but if you're using them in anything else, uh, it's better not to have a line. Kill the line. Okay, and let's add a line around that. Okay, Looking a little bit better. <clears throat> This is on a Mac, it'll be slightly different on, on a Windows machine, but you can go into your chart, chart layout here, and choose kind of what layout we want this to be. So axis titles, so we can say title below, vertical axis rotated, and not quite enough room for it. Let's go ahead and move things around, move the axis title down. And that can be X. And this one, again, it's a little bit in the way. That would be Y. <clears throat> you can format these. Number, double clicked it, format, maybe general. General. That's better. These don't need two decimals either. Double click them, number, again, emphasis, number. Um, oh, I guess we've left the decimals, that's fine. Don't need that. And then we can, what else can we do? Maybe increase the, increase the font size. So we click the whole plot. Come over here to home. Raise the fonts of these, they're readable. A general rule of thumb for all plots is whatever you think is good for the fonts, make them bigger. Because most things look okay on the screen, and then as soon as you go to another document, it looks too small. <coughs> and there we go. Okay. The last question, find the min, max, mean, median, standard deviation. So, min, max, mean, median, 
standard deviation. So we have functions for those equals min the data v2 to b11 equals max v2 to b11 median v2 to b11 average v2 to b11 st dev v2 to b11 that's it and then um, find the sum of the y data points that are positive by combining the sum and if functions okay we can do this so we have sum pause equals <coughs> well there's a couple ways we can do this we can go equals sum of the raw data points and then we can go let's see if we can make this um, do use this with the if function one way that you can do this is just repeat the data so we can go if this is greater than 0, 0 greater than or equal to I guess 0, 0 then we want this otherwise we want 0, 0 so that'll make anything that's negative will become 0 and then we can go equals sum of these so that'll do it to find the sum of the values that are positive. So in this case, we have one, two, three, four, five, uh, six values. One, two, three, four. Two of those were zero. And there you go. Using the if function and the sum function. Um, there's also the sum if function. And if we look at it, we can go the range, the criteria. So we can go the range is going to be the y's, and the criteria is going to be greater than or equal to 0, 0.0. And sure enough, we get the same thing. <clears throat> Great. So um, that's it.